assault questioned by vendors. Ayura National High School progressing after many setbacks. And entrepreneurs preparing for a long court battle. This is National MTV News with Neville Choi. Good evening and thanks for joining us for Sunday's news. Vendors at the Garihu designated Beetle Nut Market have questioned a recent assault by policemen at Nine Mile. Market manager Sakai Ambe says police fired shots at his men, physically assaulted them, and in most cases impound vehicles for no good reason. They are appealing to the police hierarchy to look into this matter, as this, they say, has been ongoing. Sakai Ambe expressed disappointment following an incident on Friday evening where four of his escort vehicles were fired upon by policemen believed to be from the Central Public Safety Unit. He says his men usually hang around at nine miles to escort villages coming into the city with betel nut bags. Without proper search warrant, police fired shots, wounding two and leaving others in shock. I wonder why the police work make him same. I say, I say chasing up this vehicle was like a criminal. Or chase him here and go under Bogorado, nine Marano, but I'm away and lose him. Or come on them. Or look him not like Scott Carbon, me blast up, or fight him. Ambe and his men are employed at the Geru designated Beetle Nut Market, one of two markets operating under NCD laws. This driver was hit in the head by pellets fired by police, while others received bruises during the assault, allegedly involving 13 police officers. Me start him car, me take up na all shooting me lo, gun me. This time bullet one me only me. Na me go time him two times all shooting him lo backside, him glass broke ya. I'm so na all all round me pipe la car na bottle round me all no catch me me go him. John Eva, a driver who helps villagers bring their beetle nut bags into the city, says apart from the normal highway patrols, many other police officers are on the road conducting search without proper papers. Some old policeman, you blow him all good blow walk here. Stop one day, you blow, but this blow some old police, you blow up walk him all slow, German walk. Please, sorry through here. Yeah. You blow my sorry through, let me blow I will drive one now, place line two. Formal complaints were laid to the Gordon's police station following the incident. Those assaulted have expressed fear and questioned the approach by this policeman. Okay, some blow legal incident come up, time in and continuously, I'll make him. This loud something here, police work, I'll make him. And he got low, low, approach him, man, long, gano, approach him, man, low. I will approach him, all this like I know. Commissioner, na, police minister, na, respective authorities, all give power of police, all give him this like an authority or order or command law, law make him more. M. Disla Mibla Paul Mibla Kanakailo Place. Jack Lapave, Jr., National M. TV News. The Police Internal Investigation Unit has made several arrests on police officers since last Thursday. Two reservist police officers were charged for grievous bodily harm in relation to an alleged assault and unlawful detention of people in September. They have been identified as Nathan Manikumbu, 32 years old from Maprik in East Sipik, and 28-year-old Aidan Posong from Sori Village in Manus Province. Both were attached to the airport police station at Seven Mile. Meanwhile, the former station commander of the town police station has been arrested for three different charges in relation to a raid conducted in 2018. Inspector Noah Levy and other police officers were accused of raiding a liquor shop at Five Mile without a search warrant. His charges include armed robbery, malicious injuries and abuse of office. Kikori District in the Gulf Province remains one of the least developed areas in the country. Local MP Soroyoe says the District Development Authority is facing many challenges to open up services. With most communities accessed by air and sea, the DDA has approved a funding of 200,000 kina to reopen and refurbish rural airstrips in Kikori. This funding was presented to the Rural Airstrip Agency this week in Port Moresby. So it's part and parcel of uh, our move to rehabilitate all the infrastructures and district uh, and to bring services to our people. So with that, I, I like to uh, appeal to my people in Kikori district particularly who buy Mru and Kikori. Um, services are coming. Uh, 
we're getting a major infrastructure in place. It's, uh, it's my second year of operation. So I'm trying my best to try to get all these things in, in place. We're excited about, um, uh, about what it's going to mean to the people at the grassroots level and hopefully the service that will come as a result of the airstrips that are maintained. Uh, we get excited about not only being um, RA is not only excited about being part of, of your role and your work, but also the DDAs and, uh, and the people at the community level. A woman charged with official corruption and abuse of office will stand trial at the Wagani National Court. Rooney Dow from Anglim South Wagi in Jiwaka province has been accused of a falsely declaring a container carrying a street value of 4.7 million kina of double happiness a cigarette brand banned in PNG. Police allege that while Dow was working with PNG Customs, she committed the offence. The court heard that her actions have cost the state a loss of 1.7 million kina in import taxes. Senior District Court Magistrate Cosmos Pidar said according to the investigations by PNG Customs, Dow falsely declared the illegal cigarettes as plastic rakes and lunch packs and cleared the container. Dow is expected to check the National Court Registry for the listing of her matter on 11th November. Her bail has been extended. This is National MTV News. We'll be back with more of today's stories after the break. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the news. Although Ayura National High School has faced certain setbacks and challenges, it is now progressing like never before. According to school principal Carl Puluma, it is the only Highland school to have had free internet for one year. This is a school that nurtured well-known politicians and thousands of professionals. Think nationally and put PNG first in whatever decisions they make in life in the private or public sector. Ayura National High School principal Carl Puluma says this is his dream for every student that walks into the gates and leaves after two years. The school has greatly changed since strict measures have been taken. Uh, it's improving in many areas, especially in terms of student discipline behavior and also our academic performance. Due to the violence of generational names being passed on, the school administration, with the wisdom of the education department, stopped enrollment of grade 11s for one year. One year, we, <coughs> we will not have grade 12. That's what we did, and the change the, the, that we made, it really, uh, it was fruitful. Much has changed after that. Students are more disciplined, and the school has started to see positive progress academically as PNG Data Co. also started a partnership to provide free internet. To like uh, Google Classroom, uh, Google Classroom and online teaching and so forth. So uh, we have seen that that's a very big improvement. Many big projects have seen new infrastructure being built like a new dormitory, a new science lab, school water supply projects and small self-reliant projects like poultry and fish farms. Government money doesn't come on time and then we have to fall back to the land so we have piggery and uh, we have poultry or other back there and we also have fish. Sometimes it subsidizes some of the costs in the mess in terms of protein so and we have a big hectare of land in which we normally cultivate. After 19 years of being a teacher, head of department and deputy principal, Mr. Puluma is now in his seventh year as the school principal. However, nothing beats the fact that he gets to see students be successful in life. We are graduating with flying colors and getting into uh, institutions as with tertiary institution into universities and that makes me really proud to be a principal because uh, government has placed us in such institutions to, you know, educate and uh, bring up young citizens who can develop the country. Lillian Sopera Kinea, National MTV News. 
In Ayura National High School, Puluma, uh, Principal Kalkal Puluma is calling on the government to be true to their word and support education. He said the tuition fee free policy is a very good program, but its implementation is a big problem. They have distributed, uh, not coming on time, a lot of delays. Uh, that makes the administration in each of the schools, not in Ayura, but other schools as well. Uh, it affects the budget and the flow uh, of the school operations because there's unpredictable, unpredictable budgets we have. Uh, so that needs to improve. Entrepreneurs in the country will have the opportunity to open more business to business links with investors from the Republic of China. 33 potential Chinese investors were in Port Moresby to hold business talks and consolidate more trade. An agreement has been signed between the Investment Promotion Authority and the Chinese delegation to move this agenda forward. The agreement embraces the dialogue created during the 2018 APEC summit to open more trade between entrepreneurs in Papua New Guinea and investors from the Republic of China. Despite the much talk geopolitics downplayed by other development partners, China wants to improve the current business environment. PNG is now the focus where platforms of trade will be initiated. The relationship of our countries, two countries, have been elevated from strategic partnership to comprehensive strategic partnership. This new partnership provides a very favorable environment for our two countries to develop mutually beneficial trade and investment relationship. Chinese-owned businesses have operated in the country prior to independence and have long-lasting relationship with the government. With China a superpower, businesses want more interaction where direct trade will be key in enhancing investment. The PNG Investment Promotion Authority will be facilitating this process. Together with the Department of Commerce and Trade Industry, is very optimistic and currently working on how we can improve our domestic market conditions to harness the opportunities for sustainable investment and inclusive growth. 14 different MOUs were signed with government departments, statutory bodies and provincial governments in 2018. This has been described by the business sector as the fifth wave of trade transmission, though trade imperatives exist. China is undeniably at the forefront in almost every economic sector. It is important that we all welcome and embrace this next wave of institutional investors from China. As China has transformed itself largely from a rural-based economy to that of a global powerhouse, Papua New Guinea itself is in much need of a similar transformation. Chinese investment in the country in 2018 was about 12 billion kina. According to business analysts, an increase of 25% is expected in 2019 going forward. Jack Lepava, Jr. National MTV News. The National Weather Service launched its five-year strategic plan recently in Port Moresby. Director Samuel Maiha says the plan is a blueprint and also captures other statutory agencies including development partners like Australia. Between 2019 and 2023, the National Weather Service will enhance its services with technical support and building of modern facilities to provide real-time reports to stakeholders. Transport Secretary Roy Mumu says the plan is significant as PNG moves forward with the global community. It took eight months to develop the strategic plan. I would like to encourage that our Department of Transport will work in partnership with NWS to support the development process as we realize the activities and strategies contained here in this strategic plan. This is only one part of the process as we de develop the actual delivery uh, programs. That's going to be a challenge. And we know that um, we have help coming because now we have organized ourselves and we a bit more, uh, we have a plan. When somebody else wants to come and help, we told them, okay, this is an area that we can come to that coordinate the person. And we now cross to Helen Sayer, who's at the Cosmopolitan Nightclub at Vision City, and she's going to give us an update on Vocal Fusion. Helen, what's happening? 
Hi Neville, tonight's show is expected to be big because it is the semi-final after all and everyone's excited. The contestants have been preparing for tonight all throughout this week, giving it their heart in their preparations and also I've talked to the contestants uh, earlier on in the show and this is what they had to say about their journey so far on Vocal Fusion and how they feel about tonight's show. I'd say it's been amazingly a crazy journey, I'd say. Um, I've learned a lot, Lavina has installed in me a lot in my singing and yeah, I've grown. So much. Um, my journey with vocal fusion has impact, um, has has a great impact on my vocals. I mean vocally, yeah. I'm more stressed. I'm helping me now. Me feel so messed up on black and stage. It's been it's been wonderful for me. Um, basically, I've just experienced growth over over this time, over this period. I'm very very thankful. Um, I'm thankful for Vocal Fusion and MTV for providing this platform for us to, you know, grow, grow in our, in our talents. I feel like I've improved, and um, yeah, I'm using my diaphragm now, so that's good. We've had a, a younger bunch this season, um, and it's it sort of it was it's been sort of hard in some moments, but in, in the flip side, they've all learned so much. You know, you can just tell by watching their auditions right from the beginning and comparing it to now. You know, you see the growth, you see the journey, and PNG has seen it as well. You know, and I'm so glad that we're getting we're getting so many compliments about this season, and also the families have really got behind these contestants and really boosted their confidence to get up on that stage because it is very hard to get up on a stage like that in front of audience, cameras, lights. You know what I mean? That's something totally out of the out of out of their comfort zone. You know, and for them to break that box and break that mold, that's been the the satisfactory that I've got out of working with these the season. Excited. Excited. I'm almost there. Looking forward. And how do you feel about tonight's show? Happy. It's going to be epic, guys. Epic. So there are six people remaining. It is the semi-finals. What can we expect on tonight's show? Oh my goodness. Okay, so tonight's show, whoo, be prepared to have your dancing shoes on. Make sure that you don't have any makeup because you're going to sweat all of that off. That's how crazy tonight's show is going to be. We're going to have a party. Plus, you're going to be having. We're going to be heart-wrenching moments. We're going to have some beautiful ballads for all the lovebirds out there that's watching tonight. So be prepared with all this emotional roller coaster because it's going to be fire. It's going to be great. And there you have it, Neville. You heard it from the vocal coach herself, Papua New Guinea. Stay tuned after National MTV News to catch a Vocal Fusion Season 7, The Showcase. Back to you, Neville. Thank you, Helen. Sounds like an interesting evening there at the Cosmopolitan. We take a short break now, but when we come back, we'll have for you tonight's A Closer Look. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the news. Two SMA entrepreneurs are preparing for a long court battle against big established businesses who they've accused of copying and profiting from their intellectual property. Annette Sete, owner of Maku Gifts and Lava Girl, and Liu Pala of Jades in Medang are setting precedences in matters of intellectual property rights. Both have had their products copied and sold without their permission. When Annette Sete established a business around her brands, Maku Gifts and Lava Girl, she tapped into a demand for authentic, classy Papua New Guinean made clothing. The brands catered to a growing audience of women looking to blend pieces of cultural identity with 21st century fashion. And these were customers who were already tired of the Western style clothing and the run of the mill overpriced imported pieces that had become bland to the tastes of the new generation of Papua New Guinea's fashion conscious. But as Annette Sete's brands grew, so too did her business's exposure to counterfeiters and large, well-financed businesses looking to make a quick buck. We anticipated that we may have some issues with our designs when we were able to market it um, quite well and we were able to sell a lot more. Um, I think it became uh, a really shock or realization to us when we start seeing it on um, like big companies doing it. 
um, copying it on fabrics, copying it on, on shirts. That's when we, when I was particularly concerned that, you know, here are big, big companies wanting to copy something that um, we've spent, you know, hours and days uh, trying to perfect and get it into the market, spend a lot of time, a lot of money to try and get it in. And the Rabaul-based designer has become the face of a growing number of artists, frustrated with the counterfeiting of their products. For an SME to try and compete with those big players, um, it does affect us in, in a lot of ways. Um, but I think uh, the realization that we can't keep up with them, that we can't uh, make a lot more like, like them and you know, flood the market, um, has gotten us very concerned. And so you've seen in some of the cases we've actually taken uh, uh, lawsuits against a number of these businesses. Annette's journey as a fashion entrepreneur began in 2015 when she found that she could not get authentic Papua New Guinean gifts for her friends, some of whom were living overseas. And this void paved way for the birth of Maku Gifts, a brand focusing on small gifts made from local materials. The development of Maku Gifts became a spiritual journey for Annette as she connected with her Morbe Sipic heritage and relearn the traditional art she was taught during childhood. Her latest designs on fabric have been the most sought after, and the popularity is also drawing people who are copying and selling the designs at a fraction of the price. Annette has since become the face of an anti-counterfeiting campaign across the SME creative space. Um, I have a big following on social media um, with my brands and myself, so I felt that here's a platform that we can use to try and raise awareness on, on, on the issue at end. And so we started raising um, awareness about our own products and then, you know, we, we kind of see that it's a massive problem across the country and we find a lot of other SMEs, individuals, uh, especially in the creative space, um, have similar issues and so they were also coming forward. So we felt that by sharing our stories um, on that platform, we were able to advocate on a lot of people that may not necessarily get the issues heard. Um, and so we are seen to be um, advocating for a whole community um, as opposed to just us. Although when you look at it, the, the cases are more focused on our own issues, um, but it does touch on a, on a really big issue across the country. For my family, this is our main source of income. We put our kid to school through this money. We buy In Medang, the owner of another business is fighting back against counterfeiters who took his t-shirt designs and mass-produced cheap copies. Late last year, San Belaino got talking me about some. All designs, people, all some all relations, all working in the salim, all shops, all. But people have been, me have been thinking of them through too, until people have been driving to town and people looking, one player, his new breed and design, one player, got radars to the front, one player. So time people look is the design now, me thinking of them almost working on the narp design, but right him to sell. But time people go na turning car come back na looking man and wearing exact same. Same on him, a design or some old set me blow him. Uh, I think um, that was uh, late last year. So, every time I'll start looking all, I'll start looking all design, I'll start copying all now. A month ago, Liu Pala, the owner of Jade's, announced on Facebook he was closing down his business because he couldn't compete with the bulk orders of cheap Chinese copies. He has since changed his mind after strong public support and he has joined Annette in the fight against counterfeit products that are killing SMEs. Uh, simple line, simple products, I work to copy them, blow them to one kind. They are copying a work or counterfeit or working in a salim, I work to one time. I think all simple line, I work having problem with them. I work to them, all work to copy them in a salim, all products, blow me blow. All designs from Mibla. So I'm um, contacting Mibla now. Mibla will talk to one time stuff. I've, I've seen his, um, his products. Um, I've discussed with him on how 
um, we can help uh, share our experiences with him on how we've come through and got through to, to court. Um, so we have introduced him to some of the lawyers that are interested in, in, in helping, in particular the you know IP and, and litigation and things like that. Um, his case is very interesting in that all of his products is copied and widespread around Papua New Guinea. Like it's sold in every other Chinese shop across the country. Um, so his will be an interesting case to watch as well. Me look him na bello me pen lo look at this like I see all the hard work na all get a walk me blow walking going to na look him narble man wear him na sabi o simbol buy him lo narble man na all get a talk blow me blow him lose nothing someone benefiting lo this like big bla big bla bell pen lo look him. The battle against counterfeits has taken both Annette and Liu into new territory. They are both learning about intellectual property rights and the laws governing the copying of products. What has come to the fore is that Papua New Guinea's laws are weak and don't protect small businesses who own intellectual property. If the Prime Minister is interested in this, uh, taking back Papua New Guinea, a good way to start is to empower SMEs. Empower SMEs, protect our work. Not all, our, not all SMEs, we, not all of us want, um, want money or want free handouts or ask the government to give us money to start up. Our work is our money, but please protect our work. So that's where we'll get our money, we'll earn our money. When SMEs, when we make money, we will pay taxes. We will pay tax, we will, we will employ people. But as uh, for us designers, we need our work to be protected. As Prime Minister James Marape pushes forward with his encouragement of SMEs, there are huge obstacles to development in that sector. Obstacles that need strong, decisive government action and maybe strong legislation. And you're with Sunday's news. True Guy Sports is coming your way next. Stay tuned. Sports. Welcome to Chukai Sports. The PNG Peppers have fallen short at this year's M1 Six Nations Netball Tournament in Singapore. The Peppers' match against host nation Singapore saw a tough match, but Singapore proved too strong for the Peppers leaving them at the full-time score of Singapore 57 and PNG 47. Godwin Eki reports. Ireland versus Papua New Guinea. The PNG Peppers played their first match against Ireland with That's PNG Paris. scoring first. Sure, they know that their, their colleagues have options. Still in the early stages, Ireland hopeful and confident saw them return the favour. Makes it this time, 6 all. PNG again with good passing of the ball from mid-court, saw them take lead. Here we go, 10 seconds, and it's in for 15-8. But Ireland managed to again score. Lays it off, in the basket, 23. In a very close match, PNG kept going, but unfortunately, despite the good game put up by the Peppers, Ireland took the charge to win at full time. PNG lost all its other matches against Botswana, Cook Island, the current Pacific Games champion, Namibia, and host, Singapore. Godwin Eki, National MTV Sports. The annual Eastern Papua Carnival began yesterday at the Bissini soccer field in Port Moresby. This is the 41st year of the tournament, with 11 women's teams and 32 men's teams taking part. A total of 43 teams uh, combined into 21 clubs, of which uh, average of about 25 players to a team, a total of about 1,075 players. You know, we're privileged. We always have an average of about 3,000 people attending. Um, I'm very, very, very happy with this year, uh, the beginning today. So it's only uh, 
uh, prompting me to do something more exciting next week and the weekend after and the grand finals. Um, and the exciting thing for EPC 2019 for the first time, we will be hosting the grand final games at the big stadium behind us. Uh, so that would be something totally different, never been done before. And True Guys Sports Action continues with more after these short messages. True Kai Sports. Welcome back to True Kai Sports. The Papua New Guinea Women's National Rugby Union 15s team, the Palais, have been in camp preparing for their upcoming international fixture in Fiji. Coach John Pangatana said their aim is to make it into the playoffs in their tournament. The PNG Palais Rugby Union Women's 15s team held their trials today at the Bava Park Stadium here in Port Mosby. The players have been in camp and coach John Pangatana says the team is preparing well for the fixtures in Fiji. Uh, women's 15s championships plus uh, World Cup qualifier will, will, start, will be from uh, November 18 to the 30th in uh, Lautoka, Fiji. So yeah, we're basically, uh, we're basically two, yeah, two to three weeks away. The trial match was to see the players form and execution of training set pieces and technical aspects in the game, in the rack, scrum and line-out. Pangatana says the Palais 15th team didn't execute well their set plays in their last tournament and the team is looking to improve in those areas as their main priority. You know, obviously the technical areas is where we, were, where we were let down in the last tournament in November last year, so we had a year to work on this. Uh, especially over the last two months, we've worked very hard on the technical areas, the set pieces, uh, the, the rock phases, uh, uh, the rock play, what to do with the rocks, defending and attack. So we've worked hard on that and the girls have really picked up. Uh, in terms of our preparation to, compared to last year, we're, we're about 50% more than prepared. Definitely, definitely we'll go at our set pieces covered, definitely. Pangatana says the team is looking forward to the tournament, but it is a must that the team win some matches with their last international tournament ending without a win. We, we didn't win any games last year. Uh, we, uh, we've got several countries that have got well, more or less better prepared than us, but we've covered areas where we think we should be competitive. Uh, I, can, I can say that we, are, we will be competitive to enough to make the at least, at least the top three, uh, even better make the top two. Fidelis Sukina National, MTV Sports. Gaire Rugby League Club Borenomu Flyers are this year's premiers in the Hiri East Rugby League competition. It was a double celebration for the club as they took out the crown in both under-20s and A-grade divisions respectively. The Hiri East Championship Grand Final was brought to Port Moresby's National Football Stadium Field 2 for the showdown. In the A-grade division, Borenomo Flyers from Gaire were up against an experienced Gaba Kundu side from Gaba Gaba. Both teams came out guns blazing. The Papuan Rugby League flair of fast football was on display. It was an intense battle as both teams played it physical. Neither team found the right play for points. At halftime, the scores were still at nil all. The halftime break brought with it newfound energy and determination. It was the younger side, Borenomu, who crossed over, first with captain Walen Tauloi, scoring 10 minutes into the second half. With the momentum in their favor, the boys from Gaire scored another converted try to lead 12 nil. The Gaba Gaba team tried their best to respond with a try at the back end of the game, but it was too little, too late. The scores at full time, Flyers 12, Kundus 4. I'm really proud of my boys, even the opponents. I mean, we've struggled a long time, after seven years. It's just too long. The final, we won the grand final. Me and my wife and my family, we brought these guys from the village. and It's very, very hard because of the time spent and the social issues that we face. We use sports to promote non-alcohol, drugs and uh, you know, violence, all this. We try to reduce this using sports. Boranumu under 20 side also took out the top prize in their respective division. We have a lot of talent in the village, but it is really up to all of us to take responsibility. You know, club, uh, club presidents, uh, executives, players themselves, and even the community that, that we play in, that they need to support rugby league so that we can 
you know, breed future comals and uh, then we can become very competitive on the international scene. Bradley Valenaki, National MTV Sports. And that wraps up True Guys Sports for tonight. Up next, the weather details for the next 24 hours. True Kai Sports. True Kai Sports. This weather update is proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. And to the weather forecast for tonight and tomorrow, southern region in Port Moresby, partly cloudy with chances of some showers, partly cloudy with chances of light drizzle for Daru, cloudy periods with some showers for Kerama, showers expected in Alata, and rain showers for Popandetta. To the Mamase region, lay to expect some cloud cover with some showers, rain showers and thunderstorms for Madang, Wiwek and Vanimo. To the New Guinea Islands, rain showers expected in Lorangau, fine for caving, partly cloudy with a shower or two for Kokopo and Rabaul, brief showers in Kimbe, and a shower or two expected in Boka. To the Highlands region, all centres expecting rain showers. Forecast for small ships, there is a renewal of a strong wind warning for all waters of the Pacific Ocean. There are going to be strong southeast winds of 25 to 33 knots expected to continue for the next 24 hours causing rough seas. All small craft and boats are advised to take necessary precautions before going out to sea. And forecast for small craft for the next 24 hours, waters of southern PNG, Indonesian border through Torres Strait and Daru to Kiwai Island, to Kerama to Yule Island, to Hood Point, Aroma Coast, to Samurai Island with waters of eastern and western Milan Bay Islands, with waters of Samurai Island to Cape Vogel to Finchhafen, with waters of Finchhafen through Vitius and Dampier Straits, to Siasi Islands to Long and with waters of New Britain to New Island and Bougainville seas 0.5 to 1.5 meters, waters of Long Island to Karka Island, Medang to Bogia to Wiwek, to Aitape to Vanimo, to Northern PNG Indonesian border, and with waters of Manus and its western group of islands, see 0.5 to 1.3 meters. And to ocean forecast for PNG areas, coral seas see a slight to moderate with southeast winds at 10 to 20 knots. Solomon seas see slight to moderate with southeast winds at 10 to 20 knots. Bismarck seas see slight to moderate with southeast winds at 10 to 20 knots. And the Pacific Ocean sees slight with southeast winds at 10 to 15 knots. This weather update is proudly brought to you by Money Plus, with you always. And that's been National MTV News this Sunday. Stay tuned right after this for the live semi-finals of Vogue Confusion Season 7, coming to you straight from the Cosmopolitan at Vision City. We hope you enjoyed it, and on behalf of the entire MTV News team, have a pleasant evening. Good night. <laughs>